welcome to free pilot training. If you're struggling with learning how to use VORs, you will understand them after this video, or you'll get your money back from this training. I thought this was free pilot training. Exactly. VORs are confusing for everyone when we first start training to be pilots, and a lot of instructors make things worse when they pass out these little drawings that might help you out on the written test, but make it more confusing when you get in the airplane. But if I can get you to understand just a few basic things, you'll see just how easy these VORs are to use and that you don't need these stupid drawings. The first one of these basic things is the difference in heading and bearing. These are two different things. When we talk about bearing, that's my position in relation to the position of something else. For example, let's say I wanted to identify my position off this VOR and my airplane's down here. Now let's say if I want to fly to the station, I have to fly a course of 300 and that's a west-northwest course. 300 is my bearing to the station, and it doesn't matter what my heading is. The heading of my airplane could be turned all the way in the opposite direction, and my bearing to the station would still be 300 degrees. And that's because that's the course I need to fly in order to go to the station. With that in mind, sometimes you'll need to know your bearing from the station. If someone else had to fly from the station to your position, what course would they fly? In this example, the course from the station to my position is 120, so that's my bearing from the station. And once again, it does not matter what your heading is, it's the course that you would fly from the station to your position. Okay, so why am I telling you all this? VORs only give bearing to and from the station. They don't have anything to do with heading whatsoever. And understanding that is the first step in making VORs easy to use. VOR stands for VHF Omnidirectional Range, and that VHF stands for Very High Frequency Radio. And that just means these things operate off of radio waves. And we use the NAVAID radios in the plane to pick up that signal from the VORs. And in most planes, you tune these in just like you would the comm radios, meaning the radios we talk on. So the first step in using a VOR is to tune the frequency in on the NAVAID radios. So today, my frequency over here at Bartlesville is uh, 117.9er. So I'll tune that in right here, 117.9er on the NAVAID radios. Uh, 117.9er, and then I'll switch it over here to the active frequency. So in this particular aircraft, this NAVAID radio is tied to this uh, VOR right here, and this NAVAID radio is t tied into this one. Now that we've tuned in the frequency, we can make sure that we're on the right frequency one of two ways. Every VOR is coded with a three-letter identifier. As you can see here, this one is Bravo Victor Oscar. On some newer aircraft, when you tune the frequency in correctly, these letters will also be displayed. On older aircraft like mine, you can actually turn the sound on on your NAVAID radios and listen to this Morse code identifier right here. Now I'm not saying that you need to learn Morse code, all I'm saying is that this is a great way to make sure that you're getting the right signal. Okay, so now let's talk about how these VORs work for just a second. These guys broadcast radio signals all the way around the station, and these radio signals are aligned with magnetic courses from the station. We call these individual radio signals radials, and there's 360 of them to match the 360 degrees on a compass. Sorry, I'm not going to draw all 360 of them for you here. I don't like you guys that much. All right, pop quiz time. Let's say I'm flying my Cessna 172 out here, and I'm on top of the 070 radial. What's my bearing from the station? Remember, we said that these radials are aligned with magnetic courses from the station, so that would mean our bearing is 070 from the station. And now you're starting to see just how easy this is. But now comes the part that instructors don't explain too well. And because of that, everyone has a hard time with these things. All these radials only broadcast from the station. None of these radials broadcast to the station. Because of that, if I'm out here on the 090 radial from the station, I can't use this radial to fly to the station. I would have to pick one of these radials on the other side of the station and use that signal to fly to the station. And if you tune those radials in on the other side of the station, your airplane will actually sense those radials on the side you're on as well. And I'm going to simplify this even more for you in a second, but for now, I've got a memory aid for you. To go to the station, you must go through the station. And what I mean by that is to go through the station to a radial on the other side. And this memory aid can also be used to help you find your bearing to the station. 
For example, if I'm out here on the 060 radial, the radial on the opposite end of the station is 240. For my bearing to the station, I went through the station to 240. And it's really easy to come up with those reciprocals by either adding or subtracting 180 or just simply looking at the other side of your compass card. All right, so now let's take a look at the to from indicator. We're going to use this guy to determine whether the course we selected is going to take us to the station or from the station. And to select a specific course, we can rotate this OBS knob on the course deviation indicator or the CDI. Okay, so let's say I'm flying somewhere east of the station and I dial in the 090 radial. Would I get a to or a from indication? The answer is, you'll get a from indication, and that's because if you intercept and fly any of these radials on your side of the VOR, they'll take you away from the station. In fact, if you're within 90 degrees of that radial you have selected, you will always get a from indication. So that from indicator not only allows you to fly a course from the station, but you can also find your bearing from the station. Let's say I have the 110 radial dialed in. If I'm receiving a from indication and my CDI needle is centered, then I know for 100% fact that I'm on the 110 radial. Now don't worry, we'll talk a little bit more about the needle here in just a second. Now let's say I'm over here on the west side of the station, and I spin the 090 course back in my CDI. In this example, I should expect a 2 indication. Remember how I said earlier that there are no radials going to the station? If I want to get a 2 indication on my CDI, I have to go through the station to those radials on the other side. And like I said before, my airplane's actually going to be able to sense these radials on my side of the station. And that's going to allow me to intercept that 090 course inbound before I fly over the station, then proceed outbound. The technical wording here is that the course I've selected will take me to the station. And if you noticed, as soon as we crossed over the station, the indicator flipped and is now giving us a from indication. And that's because we're on the same side of the station as that 090 radial, and the course we've selected is now taking us from the station. Now here's something kind of weird that happens sometimes. Let's say I've dialed in a course of 180. What would happen if I'm on a radial exactly 90 degrees off of the course I have selected? Before you answer that question, I want you to think about something. Is this course I have selected going to take me to the station or from the station? Well, the airplane thinks you're exactly in the middle of both indications, so what it gives you is something called a neutral flag. Some older CDIs don't have a neutral flag, they just don't display a to or from indication. But anytime you get this indication, that means you're exactly 90 degrees off the radial you have selected. But if I'm 90 degrees off the radial I have selected, am I right here or am I over here? And this brings us into a discussion on the CDI needle. And you're going to be amazed at how easy this is to understand. To do that, let's take a closer look at the course deviation indicator. When you use these CDIs, you should imagine your airplane being right in the center of these things. Then, the course you want to fly is the white needle. And as you can see from this example, the needle is displaced to the left. That means I'm right of course. In this example, I'm left of course because the needle is displaced to the right of my position. Now here's why everyone always gets confused with these things. In this example, I've got the 210 radial dialed in. And as you can see, I've got a 2 indication, so that means I'm somewhere back here on the other side of the station. And now you're probably thinking, well, this needle doesn't make any sense. According to what you just told me, I should be on the left side of this line, but I'm actually on the right side. What's the deal here? Remember what I told you earlier. VORs have nothing to do with heading, and your CDI doesn't know you're heading. All it knows is that you put a 210 course in there, and that radial only goes one direction. So in order for that CDI needle to be accurate, you need to turn your aircraft and point it in the same direction that that radial is traveling. If you're not able to turn the airplane for one reason or another, or you're doing this on the written test, just imagine your airplane turning to the correct heading. And that's going to make this super easy. Because if you're out here trucking in the opposite direction that you have this radial set, this CDI needle is going to work backwards, and we call this reverse sensing. Let's look at another one of these. Let's say I still have the 210 radial set, but now I'm getting a from indication. Okay, so with the from indication, I know I'm on the same side of the VOR as this radial. Now, let's imagine our airplane on a 210 heading, and it looks to me like we're right of course, so let's move this airplane over to the right. And now we have a pretty good idea of where we are. And now I know that if I want to get back on my 210 course, I just have to turn left a little bit and intercept that radial. Let's look at another CDI that's not giving us a to or from indication. 
As we said before, this is giving a neutral indication, and that just means we're exactly 90 degrees from the radial we have selected. On this particular CDI, I have the 030 radial selected, so am I over here, or am I down here? Just remember what I said to do. Turn your airplane and put it on a heading that matches the course on the CDI. Once you do that, it'll be obvious that this airplane down here is you. And that's because the needle is displaced to the left, just like the course you want to fly. Now let's take a look at how you're going to get asked some of these questions on the written test, and we'll look at some examples in the airplane. What's my bearing from the Topeka Vortac if my CDI looks like this? Well, I can see that I had the 030 course selected, and I'm also getting a from indication. And because my CDI is centered, I know that I'm exactly on the 030 radial. So let's grab our plotter and draw a line straight from the vortex through the 030 radial. And now we know for sure that we're somewhere on this red line. Now they're going to try to trip you up with this question. If you're getting this CDI reading, what radial are you on? Well, as you can see, this CDI is giving us a to indication when we really need a from indication in order to know the radial that we're on. And because of that, the radial that we're on is on the opposite side of this to indication. So oddly enough, we're still on the 030 radial in this example. But if I want to get a from indication, all I have to do is spin this OBS knob all the way around until the 030 course is at the top of the CDI. Alright guys, here's another hard one. Which one of these airplanes am I in if this is the indication I'm getting? All right, so I've got the 210 radial selected, and I'm getting a 2 indication. And if I want to go to the station, I need to go through the station to those radials on the other side. So right now, both these airplanes are on the correct side of the station. Let's go ahead and imagine both of these on a 210 heading. Then we'll go ahead and draw our 210 course inbound. And as you can see, the needle is displaced to the left, so this airplane right here is the obvious choice. Let's go play around with these in the airplane a little bit now. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going we're gonna to see where we are from the station. So in order to do that, we need to get a from indication. Probably As you can see here, I've got, got a two indication, left, so we need to get a from indication. So we'll spin us around. And if you look at the, VO, if you look at the VFR sectional, you'll see that we're approximately east-southeast from the station, so Let's put that in the VOR and see what that gives us. There it is. Now we'll just center up the needle. So, as you can see here, we are on the 110 radial roughly from the station. Okay? So that's the radial we are on from the station. Real quick, I just want to point out that Mike's actually flying a heading of about 280 right now. And that's actually the opposite direction of the course we have selected. And because of that, our CDI is actually reverse sensing here. So in order to get the CDI needle to give us good left to right indications, we need to either turn around and fly a course of 295 here, or we need to dial in a 2 indication. So in this case, we're to the left of our course. In this case, we're to the right of our course. Now, if I want to go to the station, I need to go through the station. So I'll put this on the other side. So it should be the reciprocal of that. And you can just go slow until you get a two indication. Yeah, I hear you now, loud and clear. So now, that I'm on this radial yeah, to the station, if I fly a course of 290, that will take us to the station. So go ahead and fly 290 for me. Alright, so now, if we were in zero wind situation, then uh, we would be going directly to the station. And from now, we could just fly this course and follow our white line. If the white line deflects to the left there, that means we're right of course. If the white line deflects to the right, that means we're left of course. And so we're just trying to keep this centered. The heading we're flying is going to be all depending on our wind direction. 
Next, let's look at how we can use two VORs to find our exact position on a sectional. We call this triangulating our position. Pick one of the stations and find your bearing from the station. In this example, once again, it looks like I'm on the 030 radial from the station. Now that you know that, turn and fly the 030 course outbound. This is going to allow you to stay on that radial and make this more accurate. Then, let's tune in another VOR that's close by and get our bearing from that station. Let's say we were getting a 275 from the station. Now we know exactly where we're at. And now you can pull out your plotter or that stupid little scale on the FAA's exam and find out exactly how far you are from the nearest field. Now I'll show you how I do this in the airplane using ForeFlight. Alright, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to get a from indication. So you just spin it around. And I know I'm east of the station, so I'm just going to spin it, spin it, spin it until we get a from indication and I'm going to line it up. Once we line it up, we're going to go ahead and turn and fly that heading. Go ahead and turn and fly us on a, um, be like a 105 heading. Mike's got us in a turn here. And you can see we're getting off course a little bit, but that's because we're uh, making a turn right now. We'll combat that here in just a second. At 105? Yeah, 105, so somewhere in there. Roll out, and you can see that we're slightly right of course, and that's because we made a left turn around our course now, there. So now, if he just gets a little bit left, he can intercept that course. Now, we can use this other VOR to triangulate our position off of. I'm going to use the Tulsa VOR. 114.4. All right, so now I'm going to tune in the Tulsa VOR. Slap that in there, and you can see I'm getting a from indication here. And I know I'm like northeast of the station, but I'm just going to spin this other guy until I triangulate our position here. And Mike's doing a good job of keeping us centered on this from indication here. So now I've triangulated our position. We're on a 105 from the Bartlesville station, and then we're on a 025 from this station right here, the Tulsa station. And now we know exactly where we are. And that's how easy it is to find your exact position by using two VORs. But what if my equipment's not working properly? How would I know? There's actually a few ways you can test your equipment but one in particular they're probably going to ask you about on the written exam. This is the VOT, which stands for Very High Frequency Omni Test. These things work almost exactly like a VOR. They also broadcast radials all the way around the station with one minor difference. No matter what your bearing is from the station, these radials are all 360 radials. So no matter where my airplane is, what would happen if I dialed in a 360 course? You're absolutely right, you would get a from indication. Then if we dialed in the reciprocal, which is 180, then what would we get? You guessed it, we'd get a 2 indication. Usually, you'll find these close to bigger airports, and if you want to know the frequency, you just have to check in the chart supplement. Looks like Tulsa International has one, and I could use that by tuning in the frequency 109.0. Thanks for joining me today on Free Pilot Training. If you learned something from this video, that's awesome! But don't quit with this video. Try this video. You've got some tests coming up. See ya!